Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Pinovich here. Thought I'd do a vlog tonight because we're watching the severe weather risk for your Wednesday in the Carolinas. And what I'm seeing to the southwest is always a concern. Uh, I don't expect to be at that severe as we've seen in Texas. And now tonight in Louisiana, the eastern part of New Orleans was hit with a significant tornado. But this is a system that bears watching. And let me show you what it looks like right now. Here's a look at the radar and satellite together. And you can see the system, very potent system. We've had some supercells down here in southeast Louisiana, and that has prompted several tornado warnings. In fact, had a significant tornado right here, moved through the east side of New Orleans. Um, the, the pictures are amazing. I got them on my Facebook page. Um, if you haven't seen them yet. So let me show you the severe weather outlook. You see that higher risk down there tonight, tomorrow. The risk is technically medium, um, but again, the potential is there that if we get enough instability, which means we need some heat and humidity in the first part of the day to see a stronger threat. If we would see rain and clouds, that would help us out and actually reduce the risk. So the tornado risk tomorrow, you could see as a 5% probability within 25 miles of any point on the map in orange and yellow, it's a 2% probability. Now the wind threat is technically higher. You see it's 15%. Um, so it is much higher threat, but the tornado risk 5% is not something to scoff at as we go through tomorrow. But when we look at the overall risk, you could see winds are gonna be higher. That's the medium range, but there's still that low end risk um, for tornadoes tomorrow, and depending on how things unfold during the first half of the day. So one of the things I look at is this thunderstorm fuel. How much do we have? Last week, we've had some chances for severe weather, but we had none of this fuel in place. If you look carefully here by three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, I mean, the entire area is in red. So that's in the low end range. Once you start to see oranges and yellows, you're getting between low and moderate. And down here in South Carolina, you see some pockets of orange pop up. I really think that area right in there is an area to watch tomorrow afternoon into the early evening, but it goes out pretty quickly. So the tornado parameter takes a combination of wind shear and that low level fuel. Where do they overlap? That's the ideal setup for severe storms. Now in the tornado parameter, we call it the significant tornado parameter. It's not high. It's a scale from zero to 10, but we start at 10th of a point and go up to one and all the way to 10. So we're on the low end of the scale which is good. I mean, so we're not off the charts here, but it's certainly, you know, one of those things that is much higher than normal. It, we don't normally see the whole area have at least a moderate, uh, a small chance like this. So I do expect at least one or two storms are going to rotate tomorrow. And you could see that, especially a few spots south and east. So the overlap isn't setting up for the perfect setup north and west of Charlotte. I think it's mainly going to be to the south and east. And so let's look at the latest uh, future cast here. I'll go hour by hour just re-ran this. So tomorrow morning, I want to see some rain in the morning. You know why? Because this rain, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. If this rain happens in the morning, this is going to stabilize things and keep the risk for severe storms at least lower. It's not going to be zero, but it'll keep it towards the low end. We see none of that rain tomorrow and we wake up to thin clouds. It doesn't have to be clear, just thin clouds and it's really warm and humid. Watch out. That would set the stage for potentially some strong storms. And you see around noon, to one, we start to see those storms really start cranking up. And again, if there's going to be some severe storms, I really think these are the ones right in here, that one, two, three, four o'clock time frame that will see the storm set up. And then look at that, even by four o'clock and then pushing off to the east. So the timeline looks something like this. You could see that risk highlight between one and 6 p.m. And again, damaging winds higher and flooding higher, but tornado threat right now is right there. This could increase if we see more instability, heat and humidity in the morning. If not, then it's probably gonna be mainly flooding in wind, but keep your eyes open for that. Make sure you have a couple different ways to get warnings. I am a big proponent of this. Um, if you can, make sure you have at least three different ways to get warnings in our area. That includes wireless emergency alerts built into your phone, weather apps like our WCNC Charlotte app, watching TV or live stream, social media, no weather radio and friends and family. That being said, I'm gonna push this again because I think it's really important. If you can scan your screen right now, download this app. You see that QR code over there? If you have hit that with your phone right now, you can download our app. You can set it up for alerts. Alerts are great, but you can also stream us. We will send push notifications. There's a tornado warning anywhere in our area. If you wanna watch continuous coverage, even if we're not on TV, you can watch here. You don't have to be in front of the TV. You can watch us anywhere across the country. You don't even have to be in Charlotte. So grab that app right now. That's going to be the perfect setup for us 
tomorrow. So let me go back here. I want to take one last look at our future cast because I was waiting tonight. I'm actually going to edit this. Hopefully this will play as I'm doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grab the latest data here. Um, let me see if I can get this to work. I'm actually going to go down here and grab the latest data. So what I'm doing is we run this uh, high resolution rapid refresh um, every hour. So I'm trying to grab the latest one. I want to make sure it's in here. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to pause this for a second. I'll come back to my graphics here. So give me a second. It's in the middle of pause. I'm doing this in real time <laughs> as I'm talking. Okay, so this should be the latest, latest run. So I'm going to run this and you can see, okay, uh, doesn't look that much different. So by 8 a.m. we've got some storms. By 11, middle of the day, looks a little better. So I think that middle of the day, so it's it's looking like it's trying to come in here a little bit quicker. So that's interesting and something to watch for to see if it picks up speed. And that's why I want you to be weather aware at all points tomorrow, but especially the middle of the day into the afternoon hour. So coming up tonight at 11, um, if you are going to be up, I will be on TV, but you can watch our, our newscast as well. Guess what? You can do that on the app as well. Of course, I will post a new vlog tomorrow morning, probably pretty early, and then I'm going to be at work early just in case things go crazy. It's not a full-on big, big, big day on our scale from zero being nothing to four being, you know, an all-timer. This is in that one to maybe two range. So it's low end, not three, four, like we're seeing in Texas, Louisiana, but kind of one, two. So stay tuned. And when we wake up tomorrow, I think we're going to learn a lot about how this day is going to unfold. So stay weather aware and be safe, everybody.